That there should never be air in a picture surprises me. It would seem to be only a picture of a certain kind, a portrait in paper or glue, somewhere a stickiness as opposed to a stick to itness of another genre. It might be quite new to do without that air, or to find oxygen on the landscape line, like a boat which is an object, or a shoe which never floats and is stationary. Still, there are certain illnesses that require air, lots of it, and there are nervous people who cannot manufacture enough air and must seek it for when they don't have plants in pictures. There is the mysterious traveling that one does outside the cube, and this takes place in air. It is why one develops an attitude toward roses picked in the morning air, even roses without sun shining on them. The roses of Juan Gris, for which we learn the selflessness of roses, existing perpetually without air, the lid being down, so to speak, a 1912 fragrance sifting to the left corner where we read La Merveille and escape. In the past, we listened to photographs. They heard our voice speak, alive, active. What had been distance was memory. Dusk came, pushed us forward, emptying the laboratory, each night undisturbed by erasure. In the city of X, they lived together, always morose, her lips soothed him. The piano was arranged in the old manner. Light entered the window, street lamps at the single tree. Emotion evoked by a single light on a subject is not transferable to photographs of the improved city. The camera, once commented freely amid rivering and lost gutters of treeless park, or avenue. The old camera refused to penetrate the unknown. Its heart was soft, unreliable. Now distributed is photography of new government building. We are forbidden to observe despair, silent, in old photographs. That is why I am here not among the ibises, why the permanent city parasol covers even me. It was the rains in the occult season. It was the snows on the lower slopes. It was water and cold in my mouth. A lack of shoes on what appeared to be cobbles, which were still antique. Well, wild, wild, whatever, in wild, more silent blue. The vase grips the stems, petals fall, the chrysanthemum darkens. Sometimes this mustard feeling clutches me also. My sleep is reckoned in straws, yet I wake up and am followed into the street. Someone has remembered to dry the dishes. They have taken the accident out of the stove. Afterward, lilies for supper. There, the lines in front of the window are rubbed on the table of stone. The paper flies up, then down as the wind repeats, repeats its bird song. Those arms under the pillow, the burrowing arms, they cleave at night as the tug needs water, calling themselves branches. The tree is you, the blanket is what warms it. Snow erupts from thistle to toe. The snow pours out of you. A cold hand on the dishes, placing a saucer inside. Her who undressed for supper, gliding that hair to the snow. The pilot light went out on the stove. 
the paper folded like a napkin. Other wings flew into the stone. I just said I didn't know, and now you are holding me in your arms. How kind. Parachutes, my love, could carry us higher. Yet around the net I am floating, pink and pale blue fish are caught in it. They are beautiful, but they are not good for eating. Parachutes, my love, could carry us higher than this mid-air in which we tremble. Having exercised our arms in swimming, now the suspension, you say, is exquisite. I do not know. There is coral below the surface. There is sand and berries, like pomegranates grow. This wide net, I am treading water near it. Bubbles are rising, and salt drying on my lashes. Yet I am no nearer air than water. I am closer to you than land, and I am in a stranger ocean than I wished.'